back to another reaction video. This is Life with OG, and I do have a reaction video for y'all. This is my first time watching it with you all, so you're going to get my priceless reaction. So with that being said, basically from what I'm saying off the title, the Jeep Wagoneers, well it says Jeep Wagoneers was stolen from the stamping plant. So I'm assuming the stamping plant is like the warehouse, the manufacturing warehouse where they actually make these Jeeps. And these ain't no regular Jeep Wranglers or no Jeep Cherokees. These the Wagoneers, like the old school Wagoneers with the wood grain on the side, on the outside of the door panel. They don't got that on, on the door panel now. It's just, it's too cheesy. I don't think they would sell. So they just want to, you know, they kept, they kept it simple and plain on the outside. And then if you want the wood grain with the metallic and the stain on the inside, then you're going to pay about 90 to 100 grand. And it really looked like an upgraded Tahoe to me. That's just my opinion. I wouldn't spend 100 grand on it. I'd rather go get that brand new Escalade for 100 if I'm spending 100. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to cut to the beginning of this news broadcast and we're going to go to Brandon and we're going to see what he has to say about this whole incident. Let's go. Now take a look because this is not good. Warren police say that suspects stole 10 high priced Jeep Wagoneers from the assembly plant worth a combined million dollars. And listen to this. Investigators say that some of those suspects were under the age of 18. This is the aftermath of another high-priced vehicle heist in Metro Detroit. Warren police say at 3 a.m. Monday, crooks crashed a Dodge Ram through the Warren stamping plant. Then they stole 10 Grand Wagoneers before sunrise. Police say some of the thieves were juveniles. You wonder what uh, kids are doing out at that hour of the morning. Um, you wonder where they should be and what they should be doing. Yeah. Back at the crime scene during the day, the stamping plant the best one I don't seen. Like they got some nice tail lights, but the rest of the car is trash. They stole uh what they said they stole a million dollars worth of Jeep wagon I don't know what kind of class A felony or class whatever felony that is, which I know you're going away for a while and they gonna make you pay a fine, a hefty one at that. You gonna go steal a wagon there. You could have stole at least ten you could have stole ten track hawks and the fee would have came down. They probably would have said a half million dollar heist, but they went for the they went for the million dollar heist. Playing Grand Theft Auto a little bit too much. They got a little too invested in this one. They got four of their good well, they got more than four of their partners. They got at least ten of their partners and stole ten G Wagon there and they pulled off a million dollar heist, but they got caught. And they bust right through the game, man. And put semi trucks in place to block the hole left behind by the suspects. A couple of security SUVs were also on patrol. Warren Police Lieutenant John Gajewski says the theft. So clearly, they used, they had to sacrifice one of them Jeep Wagoneers. So it's no longer worth $100,000. Because you already know once you get in a wreck, they consider that vehicle stolen. Not stolen, I'm sorry. They, well, it was stolen, but they consider it. Um, Total. So with that being said, it's no longer a one million dollar heist. It's more like a hundred nine hundred thousand dollar heist. Cause you gonna have to write that one off that y'all had to use to break down that gate. It just it only made sense to me. Y'all can write that one off. Come on now. Theft of Wagoneers is rare compared to some other vehicles. Shortly after the crime, officers recovered two vehicles. Detroit police found two more Wagoneers during the day Monday. The Macomb Auto Theft Unit is still investigating. Obviously, our, our goal is prevention, right? We, we don't want any, any crimes. We don't want any theft. And, and in these particular cases, the groups involved are usually fairly organized. So we work with, uh, of course, crisis security, but also uh, our, our state and local partners to, you know, identify the root cause and see what is going on. Listen here, man. Look how they treated that gate, man. That poor defenseless gate. It was just standing there. It couldn't get out the way fast enough. Man, they threw that sucker in drive and hit. And they 
you just hit the pedal to the metal. Listen here, man. Like I said, if at least one or two Wagoneers is out of here, if we're gone, it might have been the two that they just ditched and said, hey, man, we can't do nothing with that. They just left that there. They just doubled up in the car and got out of there. And another thing, they did say it was teenagers. So my thing is, why is it that all these teenagers, at least 10 to 15 teenagers, are not home in the middle of the night? Just steal it. I don't understand. You let me know. Where your pants at? You ain't got no home security system to let you know that your child just left the front door, went out the back door, or the side door. Like, help me explain. Oh, just all of them just magically had a sleepover. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be at Kenny's house. Come on, man. Y'all got to do a better job of policing your own kids for the police really come and police your kids and off their ass. You know what I mean? Because they out here committing crimes. You know what I mean? If you don't want your kid to do the time, tell them to stay away from the crime, man. You need to go read some books, man. Matter of fact, give them a curfew. Give them a bedtime. If they if they teenagers and they still out here breaking the law, give them, give them man, listen, man. You better buy some handcuffs from the Dollar Tree, handcuff they little butt to the bedpost, and you can uncuff them in the morning. You can call a child abuse if you want to. But guess what? You'll have one less child in the prison system. I'm just saying. Anyway, man, this is Life with OG. I'm out. This is my reaction. It's a million dollar heist. It's really an $800,000 heist. That's, that's just my opinion. But they really came up on the Chrysler stamping plane. Because y'all was slipping. Y'all let some teenagers run up in here like it was a GTA ice man. All they need is four members. They talk. They, man, they got their whole class. They was passing around notes in their classroom. Like, hey, we about, to, we, got to, we about to run this one up. I don't know what they did with the cars. Because, I mean, half the kids that I ever knew growing up that steal cars, they were joyriding. They weren't smart enough, intelligent enough to say, hey, we going to take them to the, uh, the scrapyard or, you know what I'm saying, the people that be breaking down cars, selling it for parts. I don't think they smart like that. Because Grand Theft Auto, they, they do got the salvage yard that does that. So I don't know in real life they really got a connection like that where they can sell the stolen parts to the salvage yard and make a couple dollars. You're not going to get 100000 but you might get five k each if they trying to break you down. They might try to play you and say, hey, it's hot, you know. We can't really give you that much. We can't give you 10K for each vehicle. I can bust down five. Maybe three. Take it or leave it. They're going to treat you like that. But anyway, just like with OG, just my reaction towards this situation. Wherever your kids at, make sure you know where they at and get their ass in the bed, man.